had a good week? I, um, I did. I, I actually volunteered at my daughter's uh, gymnastics meet, and there wasn't enough volunteers because there never really is, so make note that you need to volunteer and help your neighbor kids out or something, the parents of the neighbor kids. I had to volunteer Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. My daughter's nine. I gave like... You had to volunteer? I'm sorry. I had to volunteer. My ghost is speaking. Yeah. You don't have to volunteer. You volunteer. No, it was mandatory. Then it's not volunteering. Yeah, it sucks the joy right out of your giving (laughs) when it's mandatory. It's like Obamacare. Suck the joy right out of me paying for somebody else's health care. That's another issue. (gasps) So before I open this great little box that you see before me... I have to give a shout out to teachers everywhere. I, I've been kind of sad, not to bring you down, but this is a good one. Uh, my first acting teacher, coach, from the time I was 14 at Hug High School, Mrs. Loomis passed away just a couple days ago. Eve Loomis, she was 92. And when you're 92 and have such a full life, you know, most of your colleagues and friends and family have probably passed on before you. So the obituary was really sad to me. It just said, you know, Eve Loomis resided in Reno, Nevada, 92, her body was cremated. And this woman was my first mentor. She taught me how to get upset and still come back, you know, and not walk off when I didn't get my way, you know, in my first play, which I only, I didn't even have any speaking roles, but I didn't like what was happening because, you know, I had a big ego even then. And when I came to LA, she uh, would send me, you know, little, uh, she called it pocket change. So I would get a, a card from her and it'd be like 10, 20 bucks. And when you first come out to Hollywood trying to make it, man, that was that 10, 20 bucks, that was gold. I mean, she fed me. She was just, when you think about people in your life that actually make a difference, I wouldn't be probably sitting here if it wasn't for her. She was the first one that believed in me. She really honestly thought that I could make a living in this business when I would just laugh at her. So, Mrs. Loomis, wherever you are, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now time for chocolate. She did love chocolate. She was such a crazy lady. She would always wear one color. And it wouldn't be just green. It would be every shade of green. So she never really matched. (laughs) She was completely crazy. Awesome. Awesome lady. So, um... I have this great friend named Dan Kroll. Hi, Dan. And Dan Kroll and I have been midnight snack buddies for a while now, mainly because we're the only ones up late. And he'll tweet, you know, I'm hungry. What should I have? And then I'm awake and probably the only one. And I'll be like, I'm having whatever. And um, so we started getting products sent to us because we tweet about if we like. Oh, that's a good idea. Isn't it awesome? So we love Pretzel Crisp. Pretzel Crisp uh, delivered, made a, they call it a snack attack. And all of a sudden, the doorbell rang, and their car that's completely like shrunk wrap in like Pretzel Crisp packaging comes up, and they have bags and bags for me and my daughter. Like of every flavor. It was so fun. So anyways, we love Pretzel Crisp. We really do. And... I made a comment about how I wanted to marry chocolate. And uh, his name, Bob Sled Brownie. And he's at 31 Flavors. And he's wonderful. You know, in a scoop of him or a shake of him, he's just, he never fails to um, satisfy. He knows exactly what to say and when to say nothing. So, when brownie brittle was introduced to me through pictures online brownie brittle 
and my love for chocolate, they, they're challenging me that uh, Sheila G's, the original Brownie Brittle Company, was going to take the place of Bob Sweat Brownie. And I'm opening it up right now for you. I have no idea. And I'm going to make my ghostly guess. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Look at how cool the packaging is. Oh, it's like Christmas. <gasps> oh, I get a cute little bag. <sighs> Which is so perfect because we have to bring our own now to the grocery store. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we have lots. <gasps> oh, ooh, coupons. 50 cents, a dollar. <gasps> Magnets. Oh, look at how pretty their things are. <gasps> oh, my. I hope that's in there. Oh, my Lord. Okay. So, here we go. <gasps> oh, they listened to me. I said mint chocolate chip was my favorite pretzel crisp. And now they sent me mint chocolate chip brownie brittle. Riley, how jealous are you right now? Oh my gosh, okay, we got to try. Oh, there's different flavors. Toffee crunch. You notice I'm hanging on to the mint chocolate chip. Oh, salted caramel. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chocolate chip. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Oh, you guys at Brownie Brittle, thank you. My daughter thanks you. She's going to have this in her lunch tomorrow. Um, okay, here we go. Big try. And then, of course, I'm just going to eat them. I really do feel like it's Christmas. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. Am I allowed to be a voice off the camera? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because it's hard not to talk. <laughs> How are they? I need a little more. It's like a, it's like a cookie. You like hearing that in your. It's like a cookie. Oh, it says, it's a rich brownie taste with a cookie crunch. They're not lying. This is good. Is that the lady on the back of the bag there? You gotta give her some screen time. Yeah, that that is, this is Sheila Maines. She is, it's called, it's awarded the best new snack. Who awarded it? She did. No more fighting for that corner piece. That This is exactly what that is. This is like the corner piece when you bake a batch of brownies. Oh my gosh. Okay, how fattening is it? It's not. There's no trans fat. No cholesterol. It's not bad. Like, you know, I mean, you read, I don't really read this stuff anyway, so it's just gotta taste good. And this tastes really good. Okay, I'm passing this around. Oh my gosh. Okay, as I continue to eat a little more and um, get some coffee, I have this awesome video that I'm going to share with you. This uh, this goes down as being probably my favorite music video ever. It, it, it may only be challenged with Thriller. That's big. I know. You're like, wow, Terry, you're really setting this up. But when you watch this, uh, you'll understand. It's called Sweep the Leg, and the band is No More Kings. And uh, my mystery guest over here, we'll talk about it afterwards. This was... His brainchild, he directed it, and it is hilarious and uh, iconic and timeless. Enjoy. but you weren't digesting. You have to have balance in life, son. 
Rock and roll here, pizza here. Rock and roll, pizza. All I do is deliver pizzas. I want to roll. I want to rock. When do I get to rock and roll, man? Find your balance in life, Pete. Now rock and roll this pizza out of here. When do I get to rock and roll, man? After pizza. I heard the devil whisper in my ear. Uh -huh. Sensei. You're revolting. Honey, please, I'm trying to watch a movie. A movie you've watched every day for 20 years. It's over. Walk it off. Hey, Johnny, you gonna let her talk to you like that? Yeah. His name is not Johnny. And get your own trailer. Johnny. Johnny. She's gotta go. Honey, now, he has a point. You need to have a little shiver and show a little bit of respect to my friends. <laughs> From behind, I was almost swallowed whole by the thrill of the fight. It wasn't for the money, and it wasn't just for fun. I wanted to make a money, I just wanted to be someone. I heard the devil whisper in my ear. Uh -huh. He made his message clear when he said, Johnny. Monkey here, monkey think There is no fear in this dojo I was a superhero King of 1985 I showed no mercy I was always Cobra Kai But I caught a crane kick to the face uh -huh. I guess he sealed my fate When he said
him with that. No sensei. Get him a body bag, Johnny! Yeah! Oh, You will be on camera. You were on camera. That a whole video for seven minutes and 35 seconds was all oh. oh, Billy Zapka. <laughs> Billy Zapka's in the house. He was just yeah. on Psych USA's hot TV show playing this character that the picture of him was hilarious, Coach Derek Bag. And he's described as an athlete turned coach for third graders. And right. you just look like you're a nightmare for those yes. little third graders. Yeah, dodgeball coach. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I did that for reals in PE. I did PE class for in Kiana's in third grade. You did? Yeah, only two kids had to go to the nurse. Oh, well, that's the whole point, yeah. yeah. I throw a ball at this kid's sack. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes to the office. He's like, Coach, I think I think something's wrong with my testicles. I'm like, your sack's fine. <laughs> Stop your whining, Baduski. <laughs> Get out of my office. He's like this cute little, like, nine-year-old boy, you know. Like, seriously, the sweetest kid. I had to play this total... Coach Derek Bag, did you get it? Yes. Yeah, D Bag. D Bag. Yeah. Yeah. So they called me in. But I'm bummed. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but, but you're the greatest bad guy. I mean, you, you know. Are by iconic. the way, I interrupted that show. I didn't even see the ending of that show, so I could get in the car and come to bed with you. Isn't that what the show's called? Sleeping with Terry. Oh, going to bed. Going with to bed. But yeah. So know. I was like, I had, I, I had to leave. I'm like, I gotta go to bed with Terry. I'm gonna interrupt this this broadcast so yeah, I don't even know how he left the nine-year-old boy <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you're iconic for the bad guy roles and in fact yeah. when I first met you I didn't get it at all because I just thought you were too cute and hot like oh. why are they always painting you as a bad guy but really even back then you were always the funny I'm bad an actor. guy yeah like you know it's like doing a play it's like if you did Shakespeare and you played you know a villain you right. Know? And like that's, you know, people are like, not that it was Shakespeare, but I'm saying. Right. You know, you're an actor. You play a bad, like if you're on a soap, right? And you're, you're a fixer. I can relate to so that. I'm, and then that's, you know what I mean? It's like, oh God, you're supposed to, you're an actor. You could do anything with the material. You know? Right. So that's I true. always say I could have been easily booger from, um, you know, Revenge of the Nerds. We, well, yeah, I have they a... gone that direction in my early career. Instead, it was like, yeah, you know, I have a put the headband that... on the motorcycle. You have a picture of what? A booger. You, Booger, and uh, from uh, Kings of Nerds. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> you guys got to see it. Albert will find it and put it up as we talk because it's oh. such a great photo. You guys look like you're trying to be so serious. Oh, that was a photo from a, a magazine cover. That's I forgot. awesome. It was like Icon magazine or something, and they brought all like – Taylor Negron, Curtis Icons, Armstrong. right? Yeah, like, you, you know, guys like, are, like 80s guys, you know. Funny and great. It was great. And they wanted to do it all in tuxedos with different colors, like instead of like, the, it was like a mock of the Vanity Fair thing with everybody all in tuxedos. So they gave us like frill pink and blue and, you know, we're all posing. It's pretty funny. It is. Yeah, it was a cool, it was a cool. I like, loved it when I saw yeah, it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I love that pic. The magazine's out of business, so I don't know if that was anything. But I'm sure you didn't I don't think we had anything I think the internet that. probably put that magazine. Slightly, yeah. You know? Yeah. Paper is becoming less and less. 
True. Even with the big ones like Vanity Fair. Like, because right. I can get Vanity Fair now. I get it in the app on my phone. I don't even have to buy the paper. Right. Or what about TV Guide? Remember when you used to get TV Guide? <gasps> oh my gosh, it was so it exciting. Was you see yourself. Right. Yeah. Like, like, all in the family. Guest starring Terry. And I'm like, I really oh, am I'm, on the show. I was going behind before that. I'm like, all in the family. Oh, <laughs> all in the family. Happy days. <laughs> I loved Happy Days. Me too. Tuesday night lineup. Yep. <gasps> yeah. Happy Days. Joni loves, <gasps> Joni loves Chachi. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. Mork was that the same? Nanu, I don't know if that was, Yeah. Was that all Tuesday wow, night? Wow, we were dating ourselves. That was not all that we need to be. Gary Marshall. Yeah. Who I ran into not very long ago at a Laker game. He looked awesome. Yeah. He was. Uh, You're still going to Laker games? Well, actually, I go to Clipper games, but I went to the Laker game because the tickets ship? are really ch- cheap now. <laughs> 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 Weren't you one of the like? Didn't you like, jump ship? Because you were a big Laker fan. Yeah, but I jumped ship. Yeah. You did you jump before it was going down or like after it hit the bottom? Oh, oh no, God. I jumped years ago. You did? Yeah. Oh. Mainly because my former husband had season tickets to the Lakers, so yeah. I didn't want to bump into him. So I and I'm a huge sports fan, as everyone knows. So yeah. Clippers and I could sit in relatively the same spot as the Lakers for a fraction of the cost. Right. Because anything that says Lakers on it is just quadrupled in price. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like to sit on the floor is close to four grand a ticket. A game. But like you a, never paid for that. No. <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? I'm just saying. These poor guys that took you had to pay four grand for you and them. It was eight grand. <laughs> these, poor, these poor guys are spending $8,000 a night And you want a hot me. dog? <laughs> and a hot dog? <laughs> exactly. And they want a hot dog. And then they have to buy your alcohol. I mean, that was a big night for them to bring you like that. Do you remember so. there was a time when you said um, you could categorize categorize the guys in my life by the sound of their car horn? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, right? And I'm like, car horn? I don't, I don't walk downstairs for my date if a guy honks the horn. You're like, oh, oops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You had a great, uh, this is totally off of what I wanted to talk about, but you had a great book. I don't know if oh, I was supposed to, The Sportsman. Sport Fishing. It, oh my gosh. It's still existing. Is it? Yeah. Did you put it in print? Are you doing the ebook? No, no, gonna, no, no. I actually had a publisher that was really hot on it in New York. Uh huh. And, um, tell the know, people what it's um, about. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's, oh, I can't really, it's not too much. It's just, a, it's a date manual for emotionally crippled men. I can tell you that much. And it's called sport fishing. It was actually set up at Warner Independent, um, when Warner Independent was a part of Warner Brothers as a film to be developed. I was oh. developing the book into a movie. Yeah, that's great. And then in, they, uh, like, Hitch came out and like, it was very similar to that. Then Warner Independent kind of dissolved and our, 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 our movie got shelved and everything. So I still want to do something with it, but it's really funny, um, take on dating. And can I, I say it. the paper plate, the plate? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Because that, that is stuck in my head yeah. all these years. I wrote it, but here's why I wrote it. Because I didn't write it as a book. Remember why I wrote yeah. it? Yeah. Because I had roommates, well, one roommate, but I had a bunch of friends who were just constantly getting destroyed by girls. So I would go into my room at night and I'd write these chapters that were like little anecdotes and I'd slide it under their door and they'd read it. And it just kind of the pages compiled into like, yeah. you know, 70, you know, 100 pages. And it was hysterical because it was right. just kind of like, you know, it was just like dialing in on the girls. It was right around the time, too. What was that book that came out? Not Men Are From Venus, but it's another one that came out for girls. Uh, I don't know what it was, but my ex-girlfriend was reading it at the time. And it re- that's another thing that kind of... Spurred on the idea of yeah. having a manual. Yeah, I was like, were well, you reading a book? You're reading a... B- oh, I, I think I even destroyed the book in, the, in my book, but I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, she was talking about... She was reading this book, and it was all like the right proper things to do to get the right guy and you know what not to do and I'm like you're reading a book on love and romance like right that's very strategic well it was very calculated it right. was like that's not how you do this you don't you don't have a book you know so I wrote a book right <laughs> you like, don't have a book damn take that you know well, so, so Billy has I remember some of these little antidotes because you tried them out on me right like oh. what are you are you a tiger are you a shark are you a right, right? right, right. That, but, oh yeah right remember that one yeah you're all of them by the way you're like the rainbows you're the <laughs> rainbow of the ocean <laughs> <laughs> you morph and sometimes you turn into you know you can't even see you're invisible you're a jellyfish you're a leviathan <laughs> jellyfish are the most dangerous yeah. in the ocean yes well, not really <laughs> no but i love the paper plates women are like paper plates oh god oh, no, no i never women, said that no women are like plates Plate spinning. 
played. No, oh, it was played. I, okay, maybe it was a different version. Yeah. I heard I got the very early version where it was women are like plates. There are those that are like fine china. You want to set them up in a cab, you know, set them up on their pedestal and not really touch them. Then there's your paper plates. They're disposable. You, you use them once and you toss them. And then there's your everyday, you know, you can, they're hardy. They, you know, they don't break. You can put them in the microwave. Right. They're dishwasher safe. Right. 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 Okay, but hold on. The preface of the whole book, like before, <laughs> before I, before I come off as a misog- misogynist pig, <laughs> as I'm going to bed with Terry, it's, it's appropriate that we're fish. talking about sport fishing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let me fit, let me continue. This is the reason right here why that book needed to exist. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking at her now. <laughs> no, but the whole thing about the book was, don't read a page of. The, look, if it was like, if you've never had incredibly devastating heartbreak in your life if you haven't been destroyed nuke pulverized beyond recognition which a lot of men have been completely emasculated it was dealing with men that were emasculated yeah it wasn't a, a guide on treating girls or anything it was just like you know don't put a lot of guys would get put a girl so far up in a pedestal that they completely lose their identity and they kind of worship her and that's just a dangerous place to be and, and it, i saw friends doing that and they just trip all over themselves and then get hurt after time after time I'm like dude you just gotta Hold it loosely. Go after your life. Go after your dreams. You know the right girl's going to come up alongside of you. You know, you know, God gave Eve to Adam, and he was sleeping. Don't look so hard. Like things like that. <laughs> when he was sleeping. When he was asleep. And see now. So I give a, the similar advice on the women's side because I am a lot like a guy in my dating, like how I look at at situations. But for women, like my girlfriends that get their heart broken or, you know, and they get the line, which I can't believe still exists, but I just got a girlfriend that said this to me. He said, it's not me, it's you, you know, it's, it's me, it's not you. And I looked at her and said, well, he's finally telling you the truth because it is him. He's right. not ready. It and is him, but it's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> if he were just different. If you were just a little better, but it is him. <laughs> if you were different. <laughs> yeah. Things would be different. Right. <laughs> right. He is at fault, technically. <laughs> That's so horrible. But no, I told her, you know, get into your life. Do the things that make you happy. Follow your dreams, you know. And those, I always say the, the man is the hunter and we have to let him hunt. So, you know, if if you are not waiting by the phone for it to ring, you're not, you know, and you're enjoying your life, Believe it or not, it is the most attractive thing for any man, I believe, when they see it, that they will start calling. They will be interested to know more about why you're not so needy. That's a big one is the needy thing. Yeah. But I think everybody's got that. The thing is you can't. I don't think it's gender No, definitely not. And then this is my my stuff was like before the text messaging, like, I can't imagine. Like, Facebook wasn't even around when I wrote that book. Like, right. today, it's just like, it's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. It's a whole other thing. People are having relationships that are completely online and virtual and not even real. I think I and have a cyber boyfriend. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that. I think I do. Yeah. yeah. I have a cyber stalker. I don't even think you say cyber anymore. Yeah, it's kind of out. That's out. Yeah. It's like there's no, yeah. There's got to be a new there's, one. I'm sure there is. is. Yeah. It's called Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of creepy. Everybody's following everybody, you know, on Twitter and like, you know, but, but in real life, can you imagine if all those people were actually following you? Wow. You know, but we are like, you know, it's kind of like this big maze, you know. Yeah. It's just social media is a whole weird thing, but well, you got to have fun with it. We've but, taken, well, the good parts is that now you can actually, if you have a book, you can self-publish when you know, even 10 years ago, if you self-published, they would think, oh, it's because you're not really a good writer. And now, the publishing companies oh, are yeah. going under because yeah. everything is, you know. My dad just wrote a book. Did you I know that? I saw, yeah, I liked he's it. He's self-publishing, he's rocking That's it. a yeah. great one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's the history of music. Yeah, yeah, that's history of all the wars and NBC early like stuff. I mean, he went and wrote it for two and a half, three years. Yeah. It's a great book, you know. He's the associate director of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He worked with Clint Eastwood. He was like Tin Pan Alley in New York City, World War II. He's at, um, AFN News Chief. A little plug for my dad's book, Razmataz. Check it out. Razmataz, Honestly, Stan. Uh, Stan Zabka, Amazon.com. Uh, check it out, Razmataz. It's a great read. It's really educational and everything. But he self-published it, and it's going great. Right, and then know. he gets to get the majority of the royalties yeah so it, yeah. 
you yeah. put in the hard work. Why should somebody else come yeah. in, swoop up, and then you get a, like a little drop in the bucket? Yeah. Well, it's weird. Like crowdfunding, everything's crowd, crowd. Every, you know, marketers are changing their whole plans now because it's not even it, the, the the audience is telling people. Hold on a second. I There's think my earthquake. no, it's my helicopter. I'm not ready to leave yet. Let me <laughs> let me tell them. Hold on a second. <laughs> I can't believe they're here. A little early for that. <laughs> Shit. Hold on a second. <laughs> all right, they're good. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, I hate when they do that. It's so obnoxious. They're like, you ready? No, I'm clearly not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lights are on. <laughs> you know, my phone is on. I'm in a coverage area. They could have texted me then <laughs> just as easily as that. See, people, I don't think people actually, unless they really know you, realize just how hilarious you really are i mean that's, yes you have a that, plethora is that, that's kind of an insult isn't it <laughs> yeah because you're really, I really like, all these comedies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back to school yeah. you were great i hated you though in back to school yeah why back to school he was a harmless lion he was a cowardly lion in back to school i just know you were just guys, so yeah. cute i wanted you to be a good guy that's so sweet no but you liked the bad guy though you know what i mean i did right i, did. I mean you were like you were, weren't you like happy to know that I was really a nice guy, but I, at first you hated me? Like, oh my gosh, you want to hear? This is a true story. So uh, when Karate Kid came out, Billy was on doing a, an interview or something, and um, I was home sick from school, and um, my mom called and was like, Terry, Terry, that guy from Karate Kid is on. And I came down the stairs, like, oh, you know, yeah. fragile. And I saw you, and I actually prayed a prayer. Yeah. And I prayed that. And it was live, right, when that happened? Yeah. Because I was... remember seeing you through the camera lens, right. looking at me at the television. I was like It was a moment in the 12. interview where I was looking through going, <laughs> And I <laughs> she's prayed. cute, and she's 14? How yeah, old were you at the I time? I was 12. I'm going to keep getting younger. <laughs> How old were you then? I'm going to keep getting younger. You had to been. Yeah, I was young, and I prayed. Oh my gosh. I was like, "Oh dear God, please make him be my boyfriend, right?" Because that's what we do as little girls and big boys. And you were a bad guy. Yeah. And you're so you're, uh, this is proving, proving your point. Right. So, anyways, but I took it back because I don't know. There was something about you. There was a realness that I was like, I don't know. I don't know why. I've never done it since. But I took it back, and I asked him to, you know, if God would make you my best friend. And that was like when I was a kid and I didn't even know you. That's so wild. I know, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I love that story. And that's yeah. the truth, too. Yeah. And then I had the restraining order on you for a few years. Remember that? <laughs> I tried and not to remember. And your mom and everything. Your mom was, put out the fire. No, it you wasn't. did the proper introduction. And yeah. you turned 18. And then I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> 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 You're that girl from Reno. <laughs> huh? Right? I wasn't like, you want to go river rafting? Right. right. <laughs> This is not oh true. Oh my gosh. Oh my lordy. Yeah. But that's crazy. I know. Yeah. Did we show the pictures, Albert? The great behind scenes of Karate Kid. I found this picture of you where you guys are all in director's chairs. Mm -hmm. There's like uh, Tony O'Dell yeah. and Rob Garrison and Chad and Ron Tom. Yeah. yeah. Did you get the color one or the black and white? Black and white. Yeah. Just, it's cool. It just looked really. Yeah. And I love the one. Uh, because I really did think that you were the Karate Kid. Like I, 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 for whatever reason. Sorry, Ralph, but I, I always think of you as the Karate Kid. I don't know why. And then I realized Doogie, it thought the same thing. Doogie. Do you have that picture? Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. So I found this picture of Doogie saying. Yes, I and it's Doogie Hauser. Right. Right. It's Neil Patrick. Oh, Doogie Pal Do Yeah, he's Doogie so Hauser. yeah, he's so young, and he delivered my first baby, by the way, like when I was on 15. TV. Yeah, I'm 15. You're kidding. Yeah, I worked with him way back then. I wish I knew that when I was working with I him. I know. I said, Terry. Well, yeah. we had the same manager uh -oh. with Bo, but I found this awesome picture that everybody's looking at, where uh, it's Doogie saying, you know, I really did think William Zabka was the Karate Kid, and his face is so funny. It's like a little cartoon thing right no it's like really like a headshot from doogie hauser oh that's funny <laughs> <laughs> there's so much stuff of you online <laughs> I, there is that there I, is? Yeah, and you're you're lucky Every, there's that so much stuff of everybody online i know but there's a lot of you uh-huh you're scared, but I was good. I didn't put any. Oh, no. I didn't put any shirtless. There's so many shirtless. I'm like, uh, I, really? if, I have a great one. If you can put it in later. Okay. It's, a, it's the cheesiest classic 
freaking poster. I got to send it to you guys. Okay. It's me in it. like jeans that like the top button popped open, <laughs> right? With my in no shirt with a headband with my body twi twisted <laughs> like this with a literally I'm kneeling in the ocean and a wave's breaking on my back. <laughs> and it's just and there's like drippy water and I'm like <laughs> I remember shooting that, like in those days when I was like 19 or 20 or 18, 19, 20, like all of a sudden, like, you know, you're in, you're in high school doing your thing and, you know, and then I was in college, then I get in the Karate Kid and then all of a sudden like Teen Beat starts smelling you and yeah. all these kind of creepy old dudes with cameras and long lenses are like, you gotta be in that, you know what I'm saying? They're all bringing you like Leo Carrillo, they're like, oh, David Gibbs had stronger pecs, you wanna do some push-ups? And I'm like, yeah, I get bigger pecs than David Gibbs and I'm just like, you know, <laughs> you know? and they're like, yeah, I'm like how's my peach fuzz little thing going up by my belly they're like yeah it looks good you know Ow. i mean i think honestly one of these guys like got like, oh. but it was just a little creepy yeah. like how they kind of like yeah, it was you know i just world. kind of fell into that whole thing but the weird thing was then you're checking team beat you're at the store oh, yeah. like, you know and you're like oh good it's me to this you know i'm the centerfold <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your mom is so proud. Yeah. Well, for a minute, but in those days, it was like it was, it was like huge. oh, there was Scott Bayo and Michael J. Fox, and you yeah. know, and like you know, everybody, you know. I mean, it was like yeah. the whole thing. Then Tom Cruise, it's like oh, I'm right behind Tom Cruise this week. I actually found one of me, and the other side is George Clooney with like brown hair. Oh, when he did uh, Girls. I don't know. Oh. He was that wasn't him. Girls just want to have fun. No, no, no. He did that TV show. I don't know what it was. Facts of Life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have like I'm on that. There's, there's George Clooney, and you flip it. There's me, and I'm on oh, like that's a keeper. another one with a like like G. I think one time they they actually rented a Porsche, a red Porsche, and <laughs> drove it up to my driveway. So I'm sitting on the Porsche with like a late Levi jacket. And oh, that wasn't your car. No, that uh, wasn't my car. It was kind of stupid. No, it's all the dream smoke and pops. mirrors. Yep, dream there it was. Sorry, that's pops. what you were attracted. to. I was to. attracted to the car. Um, yeah. But there's tons of crap out there online. And what I love is the recent stuff. Like, you know, because like people will write an article, right, about you. Or they'll mention you. Right. So then they'll Google you. And then they'll go they'll go to, like, Getty Images where they, there's actually some really good shots of you at a premiere or something legit. Right. But those you have to pay for. So they go to, like, the dump sites of, like, all the waste ones where you look bloated and, like, you know, your <laughs> eyes are like this. You know what I mean? And they <laughs> take those because no, they're not, like, there's no watermark on them. So you're suddenly, like, there's all these, <laughs> you're all over the internet, these articles, and you just look like crap. Well, at least I do. You look fine. Well, that's why you have to have Riley because Riley, yeah, Riley stops that. Clean all that, that up. He yeah, stops man. the bloating. Yeah. So <laughs> my Twitter's my friend right now because I get to put pictures up that I like. Your you know Twitter I mean? is so good. Isn't it so much fun? You have to follow Billy on you Twitter. You have to, you guys. It's you just have you do, to. Do you use William on Twitter? I forget. Yeah. At William Zabka, but his pictures Billy. are so good. Thank you, Terry. All of them. So uh, cool, my first man. pass, because you told me I could have whatever I wanted. So I have my now I have my private collection. Uh, yes. Yeah, in its own private file. Yeah. I'll share later. Uh -huh. And uh but yeah, I was going through and I'm like, my gosh, like you 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 really uh, you can tell that you're a director, which is what um I mean we know we loved Billy and you know, when he was Rick and Hot Tub Time Machine. You were hilarious back to school. I mean, your comedy reels are, you're just funny in person. Like, there, I found this picture of you and uh, C. Thomas Howell. Oh, yeah. And you guys were just dorking Good around, and it's a gorgeous picture of you two dorking around. Yeah, yeah. But you started directing, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is your life. Um, but this I'm, is your life. This is your life. In Terry's bed. <laughs> My life according to Terry's bed. <laughs> That I just love this cup. I gotta get one of these. See, this is isn't it a cute cup? Yeah, I yeah. know. Who's the girl? It's she's funny. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Oh, you look great on that shot. That's great. Yeah, it's good. It's bet, blown out, so you mm -hmm. look better. I bet the you. guys that how many did you order of these cups? I guess I can't keep them in stock. I know, but how many did you order? Let's say you <laughs> <laughs> if you ordered a hundred of them, I bet there was like you know if you check their inventory, there's like a hundred and four were made. You know, like four of the guys that work there are like <gasps> oh. you know they're drinking. They're like watching right now. We'll take that. Oh, right? So, They're like, I have a collector mug. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know why I did it. I just thought it looked cute and there was something that we, you know, because like real shows have, like The View. I'm comparing myself to yeah, Barbara Walters. <laughs> She's done. You're, you're, I, I'm stepping in. Her slot is open. We yeah. need somebody fresh and honest and hot doing those interviews. We don't need, yeah. we need that. Yeah. So.
the new Barbara. All right, Babs. sorry, Barb. Unless you come, I'd love to Tear. do a Barbara Walters interview. Yeah, I know. Would I just want to see if she can I make me too. cry. I'm sure she'd find something. I bet. Could, you could probably make me cry if you tried hard. You could make me cry. I could. I know I can make you angry. There was one time. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> there was one time I made you angry, yeah. and I didn't know. And I called you and called you, and I finally was like, dude, why aren't you calling me back? And you called me, and you were like, don't you know I'm mad at you? Are you serious? Yeah, what? and I go, when was oh, that? no, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Should I hang up? Like, <laughs> Why are you calling? Don't you know I'm mad? Yeah. I'm not going to. Don't call again. I'm not picking up. Right. How are you? How are you? Is there, are, Everything okay? Yeah, we Good. started laughing because I'm like, what do they do? And I never like, get I can't mad remember at you. Anymore. I don't get mad at anybody. I, think I get even. Don't. No. no, I don't. I don't get mad. You were this one time you were mad at well, me. Well, you must have really pissed me off. I know. I don't know what he did. It was a blackout. <laughs> <laughs> you just remember the anger part. You don't remember what you did to cause it. So it was my fault. Right? I wasn't mad at you. It wasn't you. It was you were me. mad at me. I don't know. Right. But that's a true brother when he can actually really get mad at you. True. But as a true sister, I didn't know. As a true sister, you didn't give a crap. Right. I'm like, I still need a favor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so it's my life again and what? And your life and, and I, your directing. So you you started directing because of that video, that the sweep of the leg, right? They came to you. They wanted you to be in it. And that's you said, what it looks like. But then you That's can, not. Go on. That wasn't you in the video? No. Wait, are you talking about the sweep of the leg video? <laughs> yeah. Yes. But you would think that's when it all started. But you said, But that's like when an actor's like, we're, wow. We're, you overnight know, sensation. Overnight sensation. Do you know? You probably don't even know this. But you need to come over and I need to show you. I've been making 8 millimeter movies since I was 10 years old. You knew that, right? <gasps> I think I like did. Like 7, 8, 9, and 10. I yeah. have reels and reels of 8 millimeter like films. Like you and Guy. Me, Guy, Judy, but Mark Sussman, all my buddies. Oh. I have reels and reels of like war stuff, Star Wars. I even did this, the lightsaber stuff. Like I was directing and then hard splicing 8 millimeter film when I was 10 years old. Oh, I was wow. the youngest kid in the film club Like for like 8 millimeter film. I had all the cool cameras and the cool lenses. So like... As far as like, that's not really directing, but that is directing. Well, it and then is. I acted him. So, like, I was cutting, I was doing angles, I mean, at 10 years old. And then all through, you know, high school, I was in then a news department at the, at the high school. And then it went into video, and I started making videos. And then I started learning how to cut on video. And then after high school, I went to film school at Cal State Northridge when I got Karate Kid. And then meanwhile, I started learning how to cut on the three quarter inch decks, which we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So I became an editor on the three quarter inch decks, which was like, you know, full on linear editing, meaning you couldn't take something from over here and stick it in the middle. You had to cut straight through. You know what I mean? It was difficult. And um, so anyway, but then in like 90 something, God, was I even born then? 97 <laughs> was, uh, remember B Movie? Yes. That's my first movie that I directed. It's a, it, it's, I'm going to post it on YouTube. It's hysterical. You have to post it's it. It's so funny. I don't know why. The, the producers never did anything with it. They just dropped the ball on it. But it's really funny. It's about the making of a low-budget horror movie. And I created Dennis in that, my character Dennis. I love Dennis. Which I will hold back on. But, yes. um, but that was my first directing job. But that sucked because I had like the writers over my shoulder who are my friends. And then I never got to sit with the edit. It went with the editor. Oh. And basically they got all the film. The editor had a cut. And that was the movie. And the next, excuse me, the next thing we're on was onlining it and doing sound, but that was fun. So I did that, but then, um, then I'd made most. Yes. And most I wrote and produced, but I, I didn't co-direct it, but I pretty much wrote the direction in a sense. Like I wrote camera moves and stuff with Bobby and then I was like, that was like a full, you know, almost two, oh, a year and a half of production and then another year of festivals and touring and then all the way to, you know, what I happened. Want, but, I want you guys to see the trailer for most so that you are up to speed as we go on and talk about it because it is phenomenal and I'm not joking Billy was nominated for an Oscar okay like that's how great it is Academy Award watch it watch it yeah
This is G-rated. Um, sorry. No, it's so not I did, is, What I love about that was that was not pre-planned, that roll into most right there. I know. That was like, really good. You're we ready to go. Feel, feel each other. But you could hear all like the Oompa Loompas running around trying to get the tapes like, he said most, stick the tape in. Yeah, you know? that would And then be that guy that jumped Albert. down and- You called uh, Albert a Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to say his name. No, but as soon as I said most, you could just hear like the doors swinging and people <laughs> running down the hallway. Get the tape. <laughs> stick it in the machine. He said most. It's- <laughs> Cue it up. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to get that to the next half hour. <laughs> anyway, so there's there's the trailer. And, uh, so and, and the short film itself. It was only a minute and a half long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it took us three years to make it. But it's a beautiful film. Um, 33 minutes. But then after that, then I... Then, then I got and actually I was selling most I was actually on tour like doing screenings of it and the guy from No More Kings the the, the guy that owned the label approached me basically with the song and oh that's the circle that's Adam yeah so like I was out with most and I pretty much turned my back on my career because I lived in Europe for a while like in three years I was right. in Bulgaria and Germany and Prague and all over Eastern Europe and I'd bounce back and forth but I didn't even have a place here like I got rid of my condo everything was in storage and I was all over there so I was like completely all out of the system like I didn't do any acting. My agents were like, why aren't you, you know, you have, I had an offer to go to Australia or no, Brazil and do an action movie and they're gonna pay me a lot of money. And I'm like, I can't, I'm making my short film. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, it's negative 11 in Poland, I'm freezing. I'm like, <laughs> the bridge broke, I gotta go. You know, <laughs> Stop bothering me with these petty offers. <laughs> Tell us something dramatic for me, you know? But really, but like, I mean, my yeah. agents will drop me. So basically I like left the whole business. Didn't realize I was missing like a giant heartbeat in like oh, sure. work. Cause you can't really do that. Right. Cause like out of sight, out of mind, it's just such a baloney business like that. Right. It's like unlike any other business like that. It's really. fickle. It's worse than fickle actually. We can talk about that, but that's another story. But anyway, I was so far away from it. And the irony of like that whole journey of going to Europe and traveling all those countries and making this film, it's Czech language with a bunch of European actors and then coming back and all of a sudden we end up at Sundance and then we become kind of like recognized and then we win Palm Springs International Short Festival, we beat 4,000 films wow. and then we get to the Academy Awards and like suddenly now where I'm gonna nominate, now I'm like back, I'm like, wa I walk back into yeah. like Hollywood on the red carpet being nominated. You're like, like, I'm back. Yeah, but I didn't take any credit for it because I didn't want to step in front of the movie so I never, I never publicized it. I never did one article anywhere that, because wow. I didn't want to get in front of the movie at all. There's well, too many people yeah. involved in it. Like I didn't want to be like, oh, the, the right. karate kid's doing well, <laughs> <laughs> you know. He's went to Poland, you know, and made a movie, and you know, I, know, I didn't want to be I've that I've never guy. been more proud of you. Oh, I was so. Oh. Uh, no, but that story changed my life when I was fourteen, and it's like my gift back, you know. Yeah. All, like all in on that one. I didn't even. Here's a movie that costs a lot of money, and a lot of my life, and I, and I can't even imagine making a movie today and not having this in the budget, a line item that says your name, like we weren't even writing, producing wasn't even a line item in our in our budget. Oh. So like not only that, but then my family and I kicked in. Right. Bank, lots of money and all of it and not realizing, right. Yeah. My parents my parents tapped into their life savings for it when it was about to like before we went to Sundance, it was locked up in a vault and we couldn't get the film out in a vault to color it to get it to Sundance. Oh. We owed twenty five fifty thousand oh. dollars. And um, we met some investors and they were like, you know, they wanted to give us the money, but they also wanted like they were the wrong people for the movie. We turned the money down and we're like, I don't know what we're gonna do. And I was on the phone with my parents, it's all in the behind the scenes and I'm sitting there talking to my parents on speakerphone 
and in the edit bay, I'm like, well, we can't make it to Sundance because we can't get the film out. And I told them the whole story of the people we met the night before, that they had a lot of money, but they were not the people we wanted involved in the movie. And the next day, basically, my mom called up and said, check your account. Uncle George just wired 25000 and we're <sighs> going to go do the rest. And I'm like, what? Wow. No, don't do that. You know. And this is a short film. This isn't a movie that's going to guarantee return. Right. But thankfully, they were. And, and the movie's done really well. And we opened our website, and we sold it from our own website for, you know, we did well, but the money kind of kept, kept circling back into more and more marketing, and then it got picked up by a division of Sony for, like, bigger distribution. And so we're kind of there right now with it. Um, but it was, uh, but, you know, I stepped out of the whole system for so long, you know, as far as, like, acting and anything, you know. But isn't it just, you it's, know what I did. it's amazing, though. You stepped out of it, but then when you come back in, it's on the red carpet and done. Yeah, but if I won, like, yeah, but here's the thing. I, here's one thing I could say, and not many people could say. I know what it's like to, to have them read your name at the Academy Awards and then not call your name <laughs> that you won it. You know that when you go, I wonder what they're feeling right now. Right. Like I know what you that know. feels like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. Right. Because uh, first of I all, like, no, but you have to understand how much. First of all, the idea that you're going to get up and give a speech in front of all these people is just intimidating enough. And then I had so many people to thank. So all we were doing was writing down like all the people uh. we were going to thank. And I knew I was going to screw up or forget. Like so, but I was going to handle it. And one thing I really wanted to say, if I won, and I would have said it. I promise I would have said it. I would have said, it's an honor to win you know, this Oscar as a writer and a producer, but what I really want to be is an actor. <laughs> I was, <laughs> that was what I was going to say <laughs> for all you directors out there. I'm really an actor. You know, yeah. this is cool, but I didn't but, get a chance to do it. The, um, Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller were yeah. the ones that were announcing it. Yeah. I was watching it in New York with Clayman. Yeah, I remember you were, te we, call, we, you were yeah, texting yeah, me. Texting. Yeah. And it was so fitting because Owen Wilson and Billy, you know, you guys looked alike, right. and then, then Ben Bobby, Stiller yeah. and Bobby, right. to where I'm like to claim it. Would have been they're so gonna win. They're gonna, gonna win. They set it up it like this because yeah, it'd like, be like be. mirror, mirror. Right, right. I know. Didn't happen, but I know. But here's my feeling, because I was like, as soon as we didn't win, and I'm like, it, it, it there was actually like a exhale of relief in a weird way that really? I didn't have to be the one to walk up there. Oh. It hit me afterwards, and then these guys took their time and they bowed, and it turned out I'm gonna go. I don't care. I'm gonna say it. They were part of the Academy, and I never knew that. And our film beat them in the Palm Springs International Film Festival. They had a great movie. They won Best Short Film. We won Best of Festival. And I remember when we were at that award ceremony, and they were just like, you know, the kings of the festival. And all of a sudden, they called Best of Fest, and it was us. And, like, you could just hear them go, well, who are these guys? And they want to know everything about us and everything about the movie. And when we got nominated, had our movies not been like that, I think they pushed really hard and campaigned hard. And I didn't understand. Right, that was, so I'm not political. saying that their film didn't deserve to win, but they were in, they had a way advantage on that. And only 300 of the 4,000, like there's 4,000 people about in the Academy to vote for the short films. You oh. had to go to a screen and there was five times that they showed it and you or five films and you had to go to this actual movie theater. Oh, and only like go. 330 people actually went physically and watched them and voted. And we didn't know anybody in the academy, sure. so we didn't have our we couldn't call our buddies in the academy and go, "Hey, go and vote for us." Not that right. they did that, but when we saw them at the Oscars, I was remembered how it would have been like, "Hey, man, good luck, good luck." But right. they were like, there was something in their eyes, or like they won already. So, but it's a good thing that we didn't win. It's a good thing. It is. Yeah, it's an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it that way. <laughs> no, Billy I mean, Zashka. no. I, there's actually more backstory to it. There's so no, much. No, no. There's even a crazier scenario that happened at the Academy Awards that ha I can't tell you about. But okay, we're gonna get off air so that you we're can. We're going tell off the air now. So that you sorry. Can anyway, that's that. that's a long story. I hope you cut that all down. No, we don't can't. get me talking about Moses. Like talking about my kids. I, I can't know, stop about and it. I love it. There's so many great stories. Come like, back next week. Like Billy said, there's they cut an, uh, um, the making of video, which you can find too. Yeah. And that, oh my gosh, talk about that's heart wrenching in itself. It's incredible. Yeah. I don't know. Do we have 22 seconds to play a quick game of fling? What's fling? Ooh, 22 second fling. Uh, yes. My 22 second fling. No, thank you. Wow. So it's yes and no questions. For me? Yes. You can only answer yes and no. And everyone at home knows how it plays. All right. They're going to either uh, check to see if your answer fits for their own personal fling. If All you're right. a keeper, a uh, in training, or a future ex. 
ah, okay, I don't get it yet, but that's all right. Just so yes is a fl- okay. or no. It's my okay. own personal fling. Is there a- okay? Is there any right or wrong answers? No. Okay. Yes well, or no's? I mean. Okay, go. Are you judgmental? No. Can you read music? Yes. Can you two step? No. Have you ever lied to your mother? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you- <laughs> Do you keep secrets? No. Do you believe in reincarnation? No. Have you ever cheated? No. Are you a procrastinator? Mm, no. Do you like to read? Yes. Do you do your own stunts? Mostly. <laughs> oh, it was, I gave him the nice list. Come on, I want to keep playing. <laughs> we got it. We're out of time. <laughs> I love you guys. I sure hope that uh, you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. It is not our intention to cause or inflict emotional breakdown, mental disturbance, or physical pain. All opinions are those of persons who spoke them and are subject to change without notice. They are under no affiliation with UBN Radio, its employees, intern, or janitor. If any offense has occurred, say to yourself, I could be wrong. It must be necessary. What else is true? Take a deep breath. Let it go and repeat.